So, what is BDO Botnet? Node.js Efficiency Tool, or Botnet for short, is a Discord bot with a host of features aimed at helping you manage your guild and monitoring the central marketplace. In this video, we're going to be going over features of the bot, along with giving some examples on how to efficiently use them. First, we'll be looking at the Node War features. BDO has a long history of guilds allocating a lot of time and effort to manually writing down attendance sheets after every fight in order to sort payout tiers by hand. Not only is this a huge investment in time, but it also often results in simplified payout tiers which don't reward the users for the amount of effort they're actually putting in. Let's see what we can do with Botnet. In our commands channel, we're going to type in the node command. This will bring up a context menu. Here, we can let Botnet know we're placing a new fort. It's going to ask us which region we're fighting in, and then the tier of the node. At this point, the bot will alert our members that we have a scheduled node war for the night. If we're taking attendance via sign up, the announcement will include two reactions appended to it. One will affirm you'll be present for the fight, the other will let leadership know that you're unable to make it. Once we know that there's enemy towers on our node, we can update the bot to let it know that there is a fight. Using the node command again, we can tell it how many towers are on the node, excluding our own. Another announcement will be sent out, alerting our members that we have a confirmed fight. Three more announcements will be sent out later, leading up to the node war. They'll be sent out an hour before the fight, 30 minutes before the fight, and 5 minutes before the fight, reminding members to get on, start their buffs and food rotations, and to gather before the node war begins. To avoid clutter and confusion, all of these announcements will be deleted every single night just before midnight. After we finished our fight, we can use the final option in the node command to report the results. Doing this allows us to track roughly how much silver we're bringing in from our node wars, and once we report the results, the attendance list for the night will be locked in. This means anybody who is in the node war voice channels, if you're using the voice comms attendance, or anybody who signed up using the button, if you're using sign up attendance. So then, what if we make a mistake? Opening up the options menu and going to guild logs allows us to view a list of previous node war results. Selecting a specific war will allow us to edit the details on our report. From here, we can change the enemy count, the location, and the end result, but we can also view a list of members who attended the fight and remove any who may be there mistakenly. So, now we know how much money our guild is making from nodes, but what about our income from sea monsters? A lot of guilds bring in more money from sea monsters than from node wars, so we'll need to keep track in order to reward our high value sailors in the guild. This is a lot more straightforward of a process. When a sailor is depositing their sea monster loot into storage, they'll simply report their income with the loot command. It will ask them the value of their haul, then it will ask for an image of their haul. The image is verification that the member is earning as much as they claim they are. You, as a guild master, may want to enforce certain standards of proof, such as showing the guild bank or posting a before and after. So what if the guild funds aren't lining up with what's being reported? Like with node war logs, we can view a list of recent sea monster hall reports. Each report will include a date, a family name, the reported amount, and the image they provided. If you're enforcing strict standards for the images, it could be as simple as going through each one and finding the discrepancy in your guild funds. Or maybe we think a specific member is doing something dishonest. For this, we can use the audit function. This will provide us with either a list of recent node wars that this member has attended, or a list of their recent sea monster halls. If a simple mistake was made, like signing up for a node war that they weren't able to make, or double reporting the single sea monster hall, you can simply strike those records from your guild's history. Though, if you see in the audit log that this has been recurring, you may want to consider removing this member from your guild. Once we're confident our records are correct, we can generate a payout tier list. In order to do this, we simply have to select Payout in the Options menu. This will generate a list of family names in alphabetical order with payout tiers from 1 to 10. With balanced payouts, these tiers are the members' contributions via node wars, decided by the guild's total node war income compared against the members' attendance rate, plus their proportion of the total sea monster income for the week. Alternatively, we can choose to only base the payout tiers on attendance rates for node wars or only on sea monster income for the week. So with a few simple commands, we've accomplished something that is, for many guilds, the product of hours of fiddling with Google spreadsheets. Another common issue we see allocated to Google Documents is gear score. It is useful for guilds to be able to track their users' progress, 
However, there have been many high-profile guild leaks due to the insecure nature of keeping all of that information in an unprotected Google document. With Botnet, guild members can update their information using the stats command. The first time they use this command, they'll need to provide their class, their AP, their awakened AP, and their DP. On following uses, they will not be required to provide a class unless their class is changing. Once a member has provided their stats, they can be checked via family name or with a Discord at. This will show a stat card that displays the information they provided, along with their gear score, their skilling stat bonuses, their weekly node war and sea monster report, and an all time report of their wars attended and their sea monster income. You can also check Botnet. Doing so will provide you with guild information, such as average gear score, your total reported node wars, your percentage won, and your average member turnout. It will also display a count of how many members are online at the moment, along with the average gear score of only those who are online. This is useful information to have before Node War, or if you intend on gathering your guild together for an open world fight. You can also generate a list of members who haven't recently updated their stats. This is done through the Options menu, with the Send Reminders option. This will PM any members who have not provided a family name, and it will generate a list of users who have not updated their stats within the last month. While not necessary, keeping all your guild information up to date is useful. And that about covers the full scope of guild management. While everything so far is useful for the guild as a whole, there is another aspect of the bot which is useful and can be very profitable for each individual member. While this was the last addition to the bot, it's probably the most desired. This is marketplace monitoring. Let's search for an item. Here we can view some very basic information. We can see the total number of items listed and the average price. For enchantable items, we can see a little bit more information. We can see the average price per enchant level, and we can see how many of each is listed. For these items, we can also provide fail stacks and view the enchantment success rates. And with smashable items, we can view potential profits or losses for various enchantment steps. Finally, there's the market watch feature. If we select this option, we'll see a list of choices we can make, each of which will set an alert for various criteria being met on this specific item. Price threshold will alert us any time the average price of the item rises above or falls below a certain point. Price change will alert us any time the average price of the item has moved. Listed price will alert us any time somebody lists an item below a price point that we set. Flood alert will alert us when the total listings of an item rises above or falls below a point we set. And sold count will alert us after a set amount of items have been sold since the initial time we set the alert. When any of our criteria is met, we'll receive a message from Botnet letting us know. With this, we can stay up to date with market trends without ever needing to check the game or manually check the central marketplace app. Mm. There is currently a limit on how many alerts a single user can set up. To view what we're currently monitoring and to remove alerts that we no longer need, you can simply use the list command. So this is a lot of information so far, and you may not fully understand the use of these alerts. So let's touch on some examples. One of the largest booms in the BDO economy was when the black magic crystal market exploded due to the release of gin crystals. Let's say we're in the early phase of investing and we want to stockpile these crystals. We're going to want to grab any crystal that's listed under 1 million silver. The game won't let us place pre-orders on multiple price points, but what we can do is we can set an alert for any time somebody lists one of these crystals at any price below 1 million silver. We'll receive our alert as soon as the market updates, so we should be the first to know and the first to grab these crystals. Another item of interest, and one that I personally heavily invested in, was Ronaros Rings when the Kaposha update hit. For this scenario, let's say we already accumulated a stockpile. We're sitting on hundreds of Ronaros Rings and we're waiting to sell. We've decided a good value per ring is 5 million silver, and we don't want to wait for the bubble to pop and for others to attempt to offload their rings. In this case, we're going to set a threshold alert for the price going above 5 million silver. As soon as it does, we'll receive an alert, and we'll be able to dump everything and crash the market. We also have plenty of opportunity to make money using various features of the bot in tandem. Let's say, using the search feature, we find something particularly profitable. It looks like on these alchemist clothes, going from base to try is profitable, so we're going to want to grab more than we're going to be able to produce. 
Let's say it's not worth our time unless somebody has flooded the market and there's more than 100 listed. For this, we could set a flood alert. Or maybe we're just concerned with keeping our own pre-orders recent, in which case we can put up our 100 pre-orders and then set a sold alert for 100. This way we'll be notified exactly when we need to get back on and update our pre-orders. There are also plenty of possibilities outside of just manipulating market trends. With every new class coming out, it's important to understand how sniping items on the market works. Until an item reaches its price cap, pre-orders are all fulfilled in the order they're listed in, meaning the first person to pre-order at any given price will be the first person to receive the item at said price. This means that every time the average price changes, the queue for pre-orders is essentially reset. So, with a new class comes a new weapon, and the price on that weapon is volatile, and the average price is constantly moving. Every time that average price moves, this gives you a new opportunity to become first in line for the pre-order. The best way to assure you get a new class's weapon early is to set an alert for price change and place a new pre-order as soon as you receive your message from Botnet. I'm sure there's plenty of uses you can find for the features I've gone over in this video, but I believe I've about touched on everything here. For a guide on how to set up Botnet in your server, you can view the setup guide video linked in the description. There will also be links to the GitHub page, the text version of the setup guide, and an invite link to a Discord dedicated to this project. Thank you.